Hey guys, how's it going? It's Murder here with a uh, live episode of Analyze This. It's going to be a little bit different this time, not quite as in-depth analytical. Uh, and we're going to look at kind of frequently asked questions from my stream, mostly to do with settings, uh, a little bit on keybinds, and just general functionality that a lot of people apparently aren't aware of, uh, be it you know not really labeled that, that clearly in the game, or just counterintuitive in nature, or maybe it was light added in a later patch or something like that and people didn't realize it. So uh, this actually started the inspiration for this video the other night in the stream chat. Uh, a few regulars uh, of the stream and myself were talking about. Uh, well, let me back up a second. I did something on the stream that I take for granted uh, and you know didn't think anything of. And a couple of people were like, whoa, how'd you do that? Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about what that is in a little bit. And we started talking about the different things that people do or don't know about uh, that are really quite simple in the game and we were you know brainstorming ideas and thought it would be cool to kind of put together a small list and, uh, and make a video out of it to hopefully help some people out so there's a few things that uh, that we put together I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly uh, like I said again settings keybinds uh, just general functionality of the game things like that so hopefully this helps uh, at least some of you out uh, with at least some of the tips in the video so I'm sure many of you will know many of this but uh, hopefully the rest of it helps out. Anyway, I'm here on the general settings screen to start off. One of the, the most frequently asked questions in my stream chat, uh, which again is itsmurda.com or twitch.tv slash itsmurda underscore TV, uh, is why my HUD looks like it does. If you can't see my health right now, but you can see on the right hand side my ammo go down. You can see um, things like if I switch to uh, light assault, you can see my jetpack or fuel on the left hand side. If I take some damage, which I'm in VR so I'm not going to, uh, the health and the armor is down in the middle, the ammo count is down in the middle, etc. That's just this button right here, it moves everything, you can't really customize it beyond that, but a lot of people go, oh, how do you do that? I like how it looks, and uh, this is kind of overlooked as a, as a button since most of the stuff on this page is just personal preference, things like that, do you like zoom toggle, uh, which I do, your sensitivities, etc, etc, but that's a pretty big one that shifts things over. Again, a personal preference option there, you saw my health and shields real quick when I did that. Um, but I like it a lot, I recommend it, but personal preference, though a lot of people are, are uh, wondering how to do it, and that's how you do it. The other thing on this particular screen is the map colors. Uh, if you look at my map, not in VR training, but if you look at my map on Indar or something like that, a lot of people go, whoa, what's with the funky map colors? Um, that's just a product of only being able to customize them so far right now. Uh, normally you'll have the default, which is enemy versus ally, blue for friendlies, red for enemies, and the default, which is empire colors, so the people on the map, things like that, uh, will be colored according to empire. Mine is set up differently. Uh, I always got used to gray for friendlies, so I kind of just more or less ignored them. Like you see, you can hardly even see the, the gray names and uh, arrows over these people's heads or the terminals or whatever. It's kind of just a second, you know, second thought, afterthought, and the enemies were always pretend that these... Uh, these guys are enemies. They're always bright red. Um, so instead of using the default blue and red for that, I use gray and red. Uh, it makes more sense to me. It works for me. That's that's how you change it, though. A lot of people don't realize that you can even customize these further rather than just picking a preset. And then the facilities, I use the same thing with two different shades of red, a darker red and a brighter red, just so that I can get a uh, somewhat different feel for when there's a break in one empire versus the other uh, where that territory ends and begins. Um, I don't like how the map looks like this. I would prefer to have my map set up as uh, as empire colors. The problem that I have with that is if I do that, and uh, now my map will look fine. Yeah, I like that. If I do that, then a lot of HUD elements start changing. My mini-map changes colors, as you can see here. My terminals change colors. If there were objectives like A, B, and C here, those would change colors as well. And I don't like that, especially playing different empires. Uh, sometimes if you're playing TR, red is friendly, and then if you're not, red is an enemy. It's just kind of backwards for me and uh, doesn't help build the muscle memory and just that not really having to think twice about what I'm shooting. Uh, so I kind of keep the colors the same, and then when I switch empires, I just always switch the gray to my friendlies and that's what I do for now but in the future when they offer more uh, more options here I'm going to definitely uh, keep the map empire colors and then keep my HUD gray and uh, gray and red like my targets and things like that so that's how that goes um, the other thing which is the thing that that started this entire video off sorry about that uh, that started this entire video off it's probably one of one of the SOE devs tweeting notifications anyway um, 
is the need to never have to actually carry an ammo box in your utility slot as an engineer. Uh, because I, the other day I was using a med kit and uh, people saw me switch, oh, and all of a sudden I have an ammo box. And I thought that this was pretty much, you know, just straightforward, taken for granted. Although if you think about it, there is nothing anywhere, as far as I know, that tells you that your turret magically changes into an ammo box um, if you hit the B key by default. So that's really odd. If you didn't know this, you're probably like, what the fuck, and freaking out right now. So you never actually have to carry an ammo box. Yeah, it's an extra key press, but you can get tank mines, you can get, you know, whatever sort of utility items, med kits, things like that in your setup. And uh, just pull out your turret and hit B, and then you have an ammo box, and you still have your turret. Obviously, it's on a couple second cooldown that's shared with it, but you don't actually need to have this separate ammo box in slot 4 or whatever slot that is for you. So that's a uh, that's a good one if you've been playing engineer you definitely want to switch this to something else as you begin to unlock things again that's the B key on your keyboard that'll switch once your turret is active between the two and you can switch back and forth as much as you want uh, the other thing is uh, more of an infiltrator thing because it, it's how sniper rifles function that I get asked a lot or, or people complain about a lot and then I have to tell them no it really it really is a thing for that because I don't think it's very intuitive in the keybinds uh, is the, the ability to hold your breath like I'm not doing anything right now and my scope is swaying as it does in many games and as you might know in games like Battlefield or where this is present usually your sprint key will uh, will hold your breath and I just kind of made that assumption I didn't even look at the, the keybinds for it or, or try to map it to anything special but I made the assumption that in Planet Side 2 it worked the same and I was right you know if I hold my sprint key I can stay accurate for about four seconds and then I lose it and there's a short cooldown of a few seconds before you can do it again. So the sprint key, believe it or not if you didn't know, does work as a hold breath mechanic in Planet Side 2. Even though it's a little bit counterintuitive, I don't believe it says that anywhere so plainly, or at least it didn't at launch. Uh, maybe they uh, made it more apparent in a tip or something like that uh, on the binds now, but that does function like that and uh, use that to your advantage when using sniper rifles. And, and things like that. The unfortunate part is that even if you use a sniper rifle right now with like some of the ones that use like a 1x scope, it still has scope sway. So it's kind of like that doesn't feel right. It feels like the scope sway should be a, a mechanic of higher, higher, well, you know, magnification scopes regardless of what weapon you're using. And just because you're using a sniper rifle with a 1x scope, it shouldn't have it. But maybe that's a design change for the future. But nonetheless, if you're using a scope or a weapon with it, that's how you uh, solve that problem. The other thing is the delete key serves as a redeploy. Uh, this has been in here since uh, launch, I think, and a lot of people didn't know about it for quite a while. So instead of going to your map, sitting on redeploy, and having to do nothing but stare at this for the 10 second countdown, because if you cancel it, or even go to a different page, it will cancel the timer. You can hit your delete key by default, run around uh, for 10 seconds. If you take damage or deal damage to another player, you can still fire though, but if you take damage or deal damage, it'll cancel it, or you can cancel it with the delete key again. That's pretty uh, pretty useful for redeploying, I think, and not a lot of people know about that. Uh, to complement that, just in game update 9, they added the home key doing instant action. It, it works the exact same way as redeploy, except for instant action. The benefit, as you see there, it tells you where it's going to take you. So it'll try to prefer, uh, the, prefer, prefer the continent uh, that you're on already, but it'll tell you either way, Indar, Esamir, Emmerich, whatever, and the base that you'll be dropping into. So that's really handy. I almost never used instant action uh, after or before game update 9, uh, because I'd rather just use the timer on squad deploy and things like that, and just redeploy manually. But uh, this is a really nice feature, because I know if I don't want to go to Indar, for instance, which is the main reason why I didn't use it, uh, I can just cancel it and not go to that place, or sometimes it'll actually take me where I do want to go, and it's a pretty handy tool when used like that. So that's the the other thing. Uh, and then if we get into keybinds a little bit, you're going to see that the auto run was a pretty popular uh, bind that was not in the game at launch that people asked for. It was in Planet Side One. It's in most MMOs, RPGs, things like that. Uh, but it is in there now. You may have to rebind it. I'm not sure of the default off the top of my head, but it, it definitely is in there, and it basically just sprints for you. And I use it when you know checking the map or whatever. The only it, it'll work in aircraft too uh, with the cruise control bind, 
uh, and you'll keep flying at maximum speed. The only thing that it won't work for right now is ground vehicles. It'll slow them down when you like open your map or whatever while you have it on. But you can definitely use it to save some time and uh, whatever other uses you have for auto run. A lot of people didn't realize that it was added in a later patch post launch. So other than that, I'm auto running over to this terminal, making use of this right here. There's uh, a few other things, uh, notably the fact that certain weapons, a lot of the ones that have the S or the SF on them for select fire, things like that, have certain uh, fire modes, some burst weapons, uh, a lot of single fire modes. You can see in the centralized HUD down by my arm above my grenade icon, uh, that means, those, those bullets mean that I'm on fully auto right now. And then you can hit a bind, mine is X, I don't remember the default, but it might be something similar. And this is a three round burst, which is exclusive to certain weapons. If, uh, if that's your thing. It's not only uh, you know the advertised burst weapons that have that capability, some other ones do as well. And then of course the single shot. I don't make a, a lot of use of, of the toggling fire modes honestly in this game, but some people didn't even realize that it existed, especially on more weapons than it's immediately advertised for. You can see it uh, if you hover over fire modes at the bottom now in this nice new uh, preview screen, thankfully, fire modes automatic, three times versus semi-auto. And uh, you'll notice a lot of weapons have different auto and semi-auto mostly. Um, and then some have bursts, 2x bursts, 3x bursts, etc, etc. So take a look at that uh, if that's your type of thing, and maybe you'll, you'll make use of it. Another thing that I don't particularly make much use of, but is worth mentioning, is the fact that you can toggle attachments. I believe either in beta or at launch you could only toggle the flashlight at one point, but you can toggle the laser sight now. You can see it maybe, hopefully, here <laughs> toggling on and off. The same works for a flashlight. I don't know who uses a flashlight in this game right now, but it does work for it. Uh, again, I almost never bother with that bind in this game, whereas uh, it was a bind that I used all the time in a game like Battlefield 3 because those laser sights and flashlights were quite powerful, um, both at giving your spot away and at blinding enemies. So. Not something I really feel is uh, needed to be micromanaged, but there is a button for it if that's something that interests you. The uh, Another thing that I spoke about in uh, one of my Keybinds videos that I'll just touch on again real quick is that there is a Expand Minimap button, which I use a lot. They added the compass to it in Game Update 9, so you can see that along the top. And uh, it basically just doubles more or less uh, the size of your Minimap, both for easier viewing as well as uh, seeing greater ranges and uh, something I use quite a lot when I'm you know, checking surrounding satellites to a base and things like that and I recommend having that bound to something pretty accessible uh, and it's again not, not a feature that people realize that they can do automatically and then with that is also the zoom I believe there's five levels of zoom that work both, work both with the expanded and uh, collapsed minimap and you can bind them, they're, they're the brackets by default which is really awkward but you can bind them to things. Uh, I have them on my scroll wheel, which I find very useful. Uh, it's the same as the actual map. I hate the fact that there's not really a map in VR. But the same as the actual map there, I have the same bind. The only trouble, uh, which I guess I would consider a bug right now, but I don't know, is if you are, you know, you prefer playing all the way zoomed in like I do most of the time in infantry fight. And then you go to Indar, and you're looking at a base and you want to want to zoom all the way out to see what's going on, your minimap is also going to be zoomed all the way out because that same bind carries over between the two maps even when you're not on the screen. So just keep that in mind uh, if you're if you're uh, kind of anal about it like I am and you're zooming in or out on your big map, you are going to uh, feel the same thing on your minimap when you go back to your actual HUD. So maybe you don't want to bind it to your mouse wheel, maybe you want to wait for that to get fixed, or maybe you just you know deal with it kind of like I do, because I do like that bind. But nonetheless, you can set it up to something that's convenient for you. Uh, unfortunately, Game Update 9, I'm going to use this to just kind of mention something real quick that bothered me, uh, has adjusted the minimap a little bit, and in doing so, feels like you can't zoom in quite as much as you used to be able to, which I really liked, so hopefully we'll see that option back at some point. I feel like the, the minimal zoom on the minimap right now is not quite far in enough, so hopefully we'll see that changed in Game Update 10 or in, or in the future to allow us to zoom in a little bit more, because uh, really heavy fights, um, I'd like to be able to see the dots spread out a little bit more in close quarters. But anyway, I suggest binding that to something that works for you and uh, making use of it, because it can help a lot, whether you're in a vehicle or at a, a large base or a tower or indoors or what have you, so I do suggest that. Um, and then before I hop in a vehicle, I'm just going to go to the whoops, social tab, voice and chat, because this I hear a lot, and uh, 
I didn't even realize for a long time. I thought that the end all be all of the voice options was in the voice settings where you enabled voice or you disabled voice and that was pretty much it. That's not true because um, I didn't like hearing proximity chat but I did want to be able to hear squad platoon outfit things like that but you can actually go into the social tab voice and chat click this voice options button and then any channels that you're currently in you'll have independent volumes for so if you only wanted to hear outfit you can hit squash other channels it'll mute all the other channels but if like me you wanted to hear more than that join a squad join a platoon and you'll get independent sliders and settings for for uh the specific channel that you're in. So you see I have proximity muted, but I still have outfit on a decent volume, and then it shows your key line here. Note that these general options are the same as these general options, so don't think that you're changing uh, things here independent of one another, because if you change master receive, it'll, uh, it'll change the outfit receive or enable or disable as well. So what you want to change is just this slider for volume if you don't want to hear certain channels but still want to have the other ones enabled, and then have voice enabled obviously in general. Um, so a lot of people didn't know that and uh, I was one of them that didn't realize at least for a couple months after launch that you could do that and then was able to turn it back on and uh, only for the channels that I wanted to hear so that's nice. Uh, as a downside you can still see people popping up in the bottom left of your screen next to your minimap of who's talking but you can't actually hear them but I don't really think that's, that's a big deal. So anyway I'm walking away from the vehicle terms which is not necessarily what I wanted to do because I wanted to finish off uh, just mentioning some vehicle stuff First, uh, the vehicle management screen. I get asked a lot about when I hop into a vehicle, one of the first things I do, especially if I'm waiting for a squad member or something, is go to the screen, hit squad and platoon only, and uh, that way some random person doesn't get hop, you know, it doesn't hop in the vehicle and I have to kick him out and feel bad about it. Or on, on rare occasion get TK'd by the person because he was mad at me that I kicked him out after he got in because that has happened as well. So anyway, page down, as inconvenient of a mind as that is for something that you use this infrequently, I guess it's not too bad, is the default for this. And right now it's just, uh, you know, the screen that used to allow you to deconstruct that's coming back in the coming months. And um, the seat permissions unlocked as the default. Squad and platoon is usually what I keep it on because, you know, even if you're playing by yourself, that basically locks it from the public and uh, allows your friends to get in, uh, but you could also lock it entirely to yourself if for whatever reason you wanted to. And again, that's page down, so you can re rebind that if you want. But that is there if you worry about people stealing your stuff or hopping in your friend's seat or whatever. And then obviously if somebody already is in the seat, you can, you know, if it's on unlocked, you can go to squad platoon only after the fact and it'll kick out the people that don't meet that criteria. So that's something else uh, that a couple people have certainly asked about in the past, so I wanted to include it in the video. And last but not least, uh, I did include this in the Keybinds video, but I thought it was super important, especially for uh, novice to medium skilled flyers and pilots in this game, binding your pitch up and your pitch down keys, uh, which are in the aircraft Keybinds right here. To something on your mouse, ideally, or, or just something that is key pressable, rather than dragging your mouse up, down, left, right on your, on your mouse pad is definitely something that I advise. I'm going to try to just stop here, which is not, not advisable, but just to show you, I'm not moving my mouse at all. I'm just going to press pitch up, and this is what my aircraft does when I'm holding this key down on my mouse. It can be a key on your keyboard, it can be your space bar, it can be whatever the heck you want, but that's how fast just that key alone will move you in whatever direction. Uh, this is pitched down, obviously. So to make up for a lot of mouse movement, especially if you're playing on lower sensitivity for more precise aiming with your nose guns and things like that, uh, the pitch up and the pitch down, especially when coupled with, say, you're making a turn and you're turning this way, you want to pitch up, it'll turn your left, pitch down, it'll turn your right, and you can still further reinforce that by using other maneuvers such as vertical thrust and, you know, moving your mouse on your mouse pad, actually, to make the turns even sharper and things like that, but that alone, I'd say, is a, a really big keybind that will help a lot of uh, novice pilots especially. I know some advanced pilots don't like to use it because they prefer the precision of their mouse but uh, if you're just starting out or you're just trying to you know get along without crashing into rocks and trees and stuff like that I would look into getting used to using that on an actual key preferably a mouse button because I think it'll improve uh, improve your ability to stay afloat. I guess you're not really floating but you are flying so stay afloat. Anyway um, Thanks for watching, guys, whether you're in this uh, the stream right now or watching this on YouTube at a later time. Um, I hope you had a good Memorial Day weekend and stuff like that. Speaking of which, that just uh, just happened two days ago. Had an awesome double EXP experience. 
uh, as usual. I hope we see more of those more often. I know for, for some time it was like we were getting them every month, and now it felt like it was been a bit longer since, uh, since the last one. So hopefully we see them a little bit more frequently again, uh, you know, maybe around July 4th. Uh, ideally with a triple station cash sale, wink, wink, hint, hint, and uh, that's what I'd like to see at least. So uh, we'll see. And uh, speaking of Memorial Day, I, you know, I'm instantly getting a lot busier at work. So I apologize if there's a, a greater delay between videos being added to to the YouTube or anything like that. I'm gonna try to still do a few uploads every week. Uh, as long as I can, but I, I do know that I'm going to be working pretty long hours and, you know, every day of the week, uh, well, maybe not maybe not weekends, but most days of the week um, throughout, you know, the, the summer as it gets busier and things like that. So just a heads up, I'm still going to be streaming uh, in spare time as much as I possibly can, ideally every single day, at least, you know, even if it's for an hour one day or, you know, 10 hours the next day. Uh, so uh, please check on, uh, check out itsmurda.com or twitch.tv slash itsmurda underscore TV and uh, follow that stream. Be notified when I go live. I'm going to be doing a couple giveaways of Station Cash on the next triple Station Cash promotion, hopefully July 4th. Wink, wink, hint, hint again. <laughs> and uh, you have to be a follower of the stream, and in, in the stream uh, at that time, I'll make videos. I'll, you know, if you're, if you're paying attention at all, you'll know when it's happening. You'll be eligible. Uh, so check that out. Hit that follow button. Subscribe here on YouTube. I really, really appreciate that support. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. I, uh, I don't really think I have anything else to say. I've probably talked too much already. So you guys have a good one, and I will see you soon.